I've been trying to keep tabs on a lot of the more interesting little tidbits and nuggets that most of the AI enthusiasts seem to look over or miss, but first and foremost, I want to gloss over and cover some of the more general stuff, just so you guys have an idea of what's going on as a whole. First up, guys, Adobe released a brand new image generation model, Adobe Firefly Image 3, so this is their third iteration of Firefly, and it's available in Photoshop and on their website. I'm thinking this is maybe a little too little too late. It's not a bad image generation model, but it's not as good as Midjourney, and it doesn't have the same coherency as Dolly 3 or Ideogram, so what's the point, I think, is a lot of what people are asking. I'm glad to see that it's powering generative fill inside of Photoshop, because I use that all the time, and I think that's great in painting slash outpainting, but... Other than that, for straight up image generation, there's only a few little reasons that you might use Firefly over Midjourney, Ideogram, etc. Oh, and I'm sure someone's going to bring this up, but yes, they were caught training their AI on Midjourney images, which is pretty funny. So yeah, this was a, a little bit of a whoopsie moment for Adobe. Anyway, so Firefly's not really all that bad of a model, it's just that there are better alternatives, in my opinion, and, and a lot of other people's opinion. There are a few things, however, that make Firefly stand out out a little bit um, specifically in the UI department we can change aspect ratio in a pretty clean and easy way we could change the content type from photo to art or we can have this on auto a lot of the images that people make are either going to be photography based or art based it's nice to be able to sort of swap between all of them pretty easily and yeah you can see it's just by today's standards a fairly average model they do however have something called structure reference so any image I upload in here is going to become the structure for the the rest of the generation. So let's go ahead and upload a photo of um, Sam Altman in there, and we'll put the strength on max, and then if I generate again, well, we're still hopefully going to get something that resembles a cute penguin walking on ice with a green backpack. I guess Sam Altman will be visible to some degree in this generation. Ah, uh, and there you go, yeah, you can see it's, it looks like a person who is off to the left-hand side, which is what that photo of Sam Altman represents. And, you know, while it's cool to have this baseline structure, eh, I don't think the model is good enough to make good use of this structure feature and then we can also apply a style to it as well which is even more interesting so we can do you know this default art drawn effect style so now we'll have someone on the left hand side who is supposedly a cute penguin and it's also in this drawn art style and you can see here with sam altman and the reference art style the uh, original prompt more or less has been thrown out the window which is pretty interesting but i can actually reduce the strength of all of these and then hopefully penguin oh yeah we did kind of get a penguin okay this is sort of what we were looking for more or less so yeah it, it lets you have some level of controllability that you wouldn't see otherwise in something like midjourney or ideogram we do have the ability to do generative fill right inside of this which is also pretty nice don't get in painting this good with midjourney or ideogram or dolly 3 i can erase his entire face here creepy smile Okay, well that definitely worked. If you guys want to do some good in painting, then this is definitely the spot. So, <laughs> it's not entirely useless, okay? It's not entirely useless, but I would say that for the average hobbyist, AI image generation hobbyist, I would consider Midjourney and Ideogram to be your two best tools in the AI image generation toolbox, and then maybe this could be good for in painting. So a lot of you have also been asking me about Stable Diffusion 3, because quite some time ago I said that hopefully I'd get access to Stable Diffusion 3. Stable Diffusion 3 is released now inside of the Stability AI API, which costs money. It is not open source as of yet, and the previous CEO of Stability AI, Imad, said that Stable Diffusion 3 will be open source like Stable Diffusion XL 1.5, etc. was. I am of the opinion that Stable Diffusion 3 will be somewhat useless if it doesn't become open source. We all know the potential benefits of Stable Diffusion 3 becoming open source. I mean, we saw it with Stable Diffusion XL, with Stable Diffusion 1.5. People still are using those models to date. But if the question is, oh, would you rather use or pay for Stable Diffusion 3 above something like Midjourney or Ideogram? Not so much. Anyways, we can try this thing out so let's give it a nice lemon prompt we'll give it something pretty complicated so we want a lemon character relaxing on a beach to the left hand side we can see snowy mountains the sand on the beach is pink oh image generation is for pro 
All right, we got this pro subscription now, and I mean, these images right off the bat aren't too bad, and obviously the whole deal with Stable Diffusion 3 is that you'd be able to have it as open source and fine-tune it to whatever use case you want. Let's take the same exact prompt and toss it into Ideogram. See, if you're gonna make me pay for an image generator, why would I not go to Ideogram AI? Look at how much better these results are. I mean, it's, it's pretty undeniable. Again, if it's open source, like, I understand stand but but if you're paying like I'm just gonna pay for this instead man and I mean here's mid journey v6 again go ahead and compare that to stable diffusion 3 which is a great starting point but if we are going to have to pay then I'm gonna pay for mid journey I'm gonna pay for ideogram AI I'm not gonna be paying for stable diffusion 3 you get the point I'm canceling my subscription I just bought it for that demo for you guys in my opinion stable diffusion 3 is pretty much worthless unless it's going to be an open source model and again, guys, apparently the current trajectory for Stable Diffusion 3 is going to be open source in the future, and that's when I will give it credit, and that's when I will really take a deep dive and make a broader video about it, but for now, it's just a little test, and I go, okay, I'm gonna use these other tools because they're just better right now. Okay, let's dive into some of the more sweet little nuggets of joy that the AI community and the AI world has brought us recently. First up, this is one of the best accounts for AI to follow on Twitter, so definitely recommend following Matt Schumer, developer of Hyperite AI, constantly playing around with large language models, and also releasing open source stuff like this, doubling Llama 3's context window to 16,000 tokens, and if you aren't caught up on Llama 3, definitely check out my video I posted, it's the last video before this one. Llama 3 is an incredible open source model by the Zuck Meta AI themselves, but there was, you know, one little hair in the soup with Llama 3 in that its default context window was only 8,000 tokens, which really isn't too much, so Matt Schumer, right off the bat, has already doubled it to 16,000 tokens so it can now take in twice the amount of information. It hasn't been benchmarked yet, but Matt Schumer said it looked pretty promising. But guys, this is why I love the open source community so much. It's ready to be downloaded right here on the website, and you can run this locally on your own machine at home with relative ease. And it's at least as good as GPT 3.5, the free version of chat GPT, except it has actually a bigger context window now. By the way, if you want some tutorials on how to install this stuff locally, please let me know. Very, very easy, simple installs, and you can get these things running well. And if your machine is powerful enough, possibly even a GPT-4-ish replacement that can run locally for free, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Oh, and I know that earlier we were sort of harping on Adobe, but Adobe actually just released an AI upscaler that's pretty dang good. So this is brought to us by Dreaming Tulpa, here on Twitter. You can see though, right off the rip, the upscaling is quite impressive. This is a very low resolution video. This is quite a bit better. And again, image upscaling is something that we have seen quite a bit of, but video upscaling is pretty far and few in between in the AI space. And this is some of the best that I've seen. We've also got an example here of a dog being upscaled. We've also got some pancakes with some, I don't even know what that is, frosting, I guess, being dropped all on the pancakes. Very, very stable results though probably all cherry picked let's be honest so I doubt it's this good in practice but you can see something very complex like a waterfall I gotta say it handles that pretty darn well even the videos of people like I wouldn't be able to tell that's upscaled at all I don't think like yeah this that's pretty darn impressive. We could upscale all of our old 1080p footage to 4K, theoretically. <laughs> this one, I think you can definitely tell in some of the finer details, like especially up here, it just doesn't really know what to make of that, but the background looks pretty good in the horse in general. Gotta say, that's impressive. And the list sort of goes on. I'll link this down below. And Dreaming Tulpa does make a pretty good point here, not expecting this to be exactly open source from Adobe because they're not really known to do open source software, but we can definitely bet that they're going to be implementing AI upscaling at some point in their video products because this paper is pretty dang impressive. Oh, by the way, guys, here is another one also brought to us by Dreaming Tulpa. This is Video 2 Game. So you essentially take videos of real life scenes and then they can be converted into realistic interactive game environments. And you can see the little demo here is clearly someone just took a video of their backyard, but now it's actually a playable environment for this character where objects can actually be 
kicked and the little player character can run around it. And this one does seem to be available for download in terms of the code and you can actually check out the demo on GitHub as well. I might do a deeper dive video into this one, maybe even do a scan of my backyard, a little video of my backyard and turn it into a interactive video game with AI, but this is pretty darn cool. It shows you that there are so many different unique ideas in the AI space that can be worked upon, and that while something like this kind of flies under the radar, this could be the start of something much larger and much more mainstream. You can see the environment is fully 3D mapped to some degree. I mean, it's not perfect, far from perfect, I would say, but the character can still navigate it in a way that is at least intuitive, and physics sort of feel natural here. You can see the lighting on the table here looks pretty natural. Even something as simple as this, even, even though it's far from perfect, like I said, I think really spawns hope inside of me for the future of AI technology and the incredible things that we can do with the data that we have. Oh, by the way, guys, Grok, which develops custom LPU inference chips just for large language models, has added Llama 370B into their interface. And of course, when you have chips that are dedicated to process large language model inferencing while well, you have insane speeds even with you know medium sized models like a 70b size and it's pretty cool because sean ralston brought us this and you can actually join the beta for the grok mobile app where you can access these models for free at insane speeds right from your phone oh and you know what i also want to talk about this too this is from tl draw which is an ai focused digital whiteboard replacement website. Anyways, they're always posting crazy little demos of the things that they're trying and testing out with AI. And I think this is a really good example of something, again, that's not maybe fully realized or fully working yet, but really shows the creativity and some of those possibilities that you just don't quite think about all the time with AI, like autocomplete, but for web design, for example. In this video, he types out full name and then it's inferring, the AI is inferring, oh, we want email next in this user interface. And then based off of that and infers oh password confirm password and then a submit button and you can move things around and adjust it in real time i mean the way that we build things is going to change fundamentally in the future because of ai technology and this is just a small example a small little hint at what that might look like and i recommend following the tl draw account here on twitter because constantly they are posting these crazy little things here again restaurant menu appetizers entrees desserts beverages and it changes again in real time here's another example but we're doing it now with an image let's say so we've got two eyes here a head a mouth a nose that's not where it's supposed to be but you get the point it's an AI kind of inferring where things are supposed to go in this visual landscape. Like I said, guys, definitely recommend just checking this page out because it's a lot of these really creative little alpha, pre-alpha ideas and just sort of toying around with this stuff to see what's possible with artificial intelligence. So guys, that's what I have for you today. Things are definitely cooling off a little bit from last week's Llama 3 drop and yeah, some interesting things to talk about, some interesting little nuggets that I would definitely are a little bit more flying under the radar but still really cool and really have some good points that get brought up i'll see you in the next one guys thanks for watching and goodbye